Sa pagsusulat ng kasaysayan, napakahalaga ang magtanong. Nasaan na tayo? Maayos na ba ang buhay sa Pilipinas? Ano ang itataya mo para sa ating kalayaan? Panuorin ang kwento ng mga bayani sa bayanan daloy ng kanilang buhay. At makasakali, makahanap tayo ng mga sagot sa nakaraan. Mga sagot sa hamon ng kasalukuyan. Susuko ako. Susuko ako dahil may sakit na lahat. Ang mga mahal ko, ang dami ng dinaan ng paghihirap. Are you in the right side of history or in the wrong side of history? Siya, despite him being there in the context of all that, he was always in the right side of history. The most significant contribution was providing leadership for the opposition to American colonial rule. Malvar stepped in and took over the leadership, and he was up to it. You know, he proved uh, that he could do it. Pero maliwanag din kasi na malakas yung sense of duty ni Malbar sa mga kababayan niya eh. Nasa forefront si Miguel Malbar dahil yun ang tawag ng panahon, yun ang pangangailangan ng bayan eh. Five-two siya, may barbas, di matangkad, at saka uh, payat. Matipuno, typical ng Batanggenyo, nanlilisik ang mga mata pag tumingin. Hindi siya mistiso, pero hindi rin siya kayumanggi. So parang sakto lang. Mukhang, mukhang Pilipino, mukhang Pinoy. Bago naging revolusyonaryo si Miguel Malbar, pwede natin siyang tawagin gentleman farmer or planter. Uh, he, he's a gentleman who liked working with his hands or pulling himself up by his own bootstrap. 
meron kasing romansa sa agrikultura eh, no? If you grow up working the land, there really is a connection between a person and his field. Ang lolo namin ay landed, pero nasa baba siya. Na, na, Nakikipag-ugnayan siya sa mga tao. Nagbubuhat siya. Nag-aararo siya ng mga, ng mga lupain. So, very much hands-on siya. He's a typical leader from the middle, in between the really elite illustrado, Spanish-educated Filipinos, and the, uh, the masses of the people. He could, he could be the intermediary, and that was the secret of success. Part ng heroism ng lolo ko ay ang asawa niya. Laging nasa tabi niya, kasama yung mga anak kahit nang nasa bundok. He was also mayor for many years of Santo Tomas. That's very important. He was the one who, who could mediate and who could solve problems, the friction that often came up between the Spaniards and the locals. You, you need that kind of experience in order to then lead a guerrilla army. Sinulat ni Rizal yung Noli May Tangeren, yung mga ginagawa nila Damaso at nila Salvi, hindi yan ang gagaling sa fiction. Kung ano yung nababasa mo kay Dad, ganun yung mga typical na gawain yan. Eh, yung mga prayli kasi sa maraming bayan sa kapuloan natin, gusto nila sila nagpapatakbo ng lahat ng bagay. Eh, siyempre, Hindi naman papayag yung mga Batanggay niya Santo Tomas, meron silang independent street. At dahil nga nahalal si Miguel Malbar, bakit yung Praile yung masusunod? Ang lolo ko ay reluctant revolutionary. No, he was not eager until he was pushed. So, yun ang nag-joke sa kanya, yung kanyang pagkagalit sa maltreatment na kanyang ama. Madaling sabihin kasi na yung isang push factor, yun ngang nakita nilang pang-aabuso ng praile. Pero maliwanag din kasi na malakas yung sense of duty ni Malbar sa mga kababayan niya. So, hindi mo talaga aasahan na magiging nasa tabi-tabi lang siya habang nakikipagbakbakan yung mga kababayan niya. This is where Malvar was a genius. He managed to actually forge an army out of these different mayors and their armed men. Because he was once a mayor. <laughs> he knew how to deal with them, and he knew how to organize them and to give them basic training in military tactics. Remember, ang Batanggay niyo, Barako. May pagkagago yung Batanggay niyo, mait yung ulo, makikipag-away. They're uncouth, they're tactless, makikipagsuntukan, matalino, pero bara ako yan. And for you to lead an army of barakos, what does that say about your character? Hindi ka pushover. 
At the same time, there are stories where in Alaska siya ng mga tao niya, tumatawa lang siya. So hindi rin siya unapproachable. You cannot lead an effort and not, hindi ka makikipagkapwa-tao. Ang lolo ko at that time, hindi siya po mapanig. Wala siya ng convention. He was not required to pick a side. Until the Tejeros Convention, where everyone already took sides, siya, wala siya doon. At pinuntahan siya ni Bonifacio, seeking for his help. Ang loyalty is not to the organization. Ang loyalty is to people. He was able to go beyond these factional divisions. He managed to be on good terms with both because for him, what was important was unity in the face of the enemy. Pagdating ng mga Amerikano, again, hindi naman pagsalakaya na sabay-sabay lahat. So ang concentration ng force nila sa Maynila and again to the north, hindi pa kasi pumapasok yung forces ng Amerika sa tumak. By 1900, they decided to invade Southern Luzon and so Malvar had time to set up his defenses. He relied on planting loyal people in the, in the towns. Who were, whom the Americans thought were reliable and were going to be loyal to the Americans were actually loyal to Malvar. Malvar had to, had to move his, his line back, but he always kept the, uh, the pressure on the Americans. General Bell then came to Southern Tagalog and then his mission was to, to destroy the resistance. And so it was General Bell, Bell versus General Malvar, basically. The thing about American, uh, the American intervention is they always try to portray it as something benevolent and friendship. We come as friends. We helped you to get rid of the Spaniards and now we will help you, uh, you know, 
become an independent people. It's just a facade, you know. They just wanted to control the country and to exploit it and to make the Filipinos just a colonized people. The, the American tactics were, were much more cruel. I mean, they really tortured people and they burned barrios. They captured any relative of any, of any uh, rebel or revolutionary officer and used that person, to, that captured family member, to try to force the relative to come down and surrender. And they managed to do that to quite a few high-ranking officers. But so Malvar's uh, wife, Paula, had to be, to be with him, to be protected. Concentration camp uh, is one of the, was one of the tools of American pacification. They concentrated the whole population of the district into the town center. So whatever was left outside the población was destroyed. And anyone caught in outside was, was then, you know, you could then be captured or killed. So that's how they managed to, you know, to subdue the guerrilla resistance by cutting the link between the outside and the inside. The scorched earth tactics means the burning of villages, burning of rice stocks that, that took place outside the population. And that's what made southern Luzon a disaster zone for up to eight years. Agriculture was destroyed. The American garrisons, the sources of food and medicine. So, you know, everything was a mess. People were dying of hunger and disease. The only place where you could get medicine and food was the garrison. And so you all go there, please, sir, please give us food. So this is the beginning of the dependence. The, 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 this is what, this is pacification. Wala namang panang mag-aral paano makipagdigma eh. So you learn on the fly and you, you operate on what you know and you adjust. The Americans were a vastly superior force. They had, I mean, they had all of the equipment, the cavalry horses, the machine guns, everything. This was the United States Army that won the American Civil War. This was the United States Army that uh, manufactured its own guns. No? So we were facing a full-fledged imperialist army. And the Americans sent their best generals, you know, West Point graduates. Malvar and his forces were forced to rely on captured weapons from the Spaniards. You will lure the enemy into the highlands Kasi teritoryo mo yun eh. So doon medyo magpapatas tayo. Alam mong pangatayo rin dahil mas alam natin yung terrain. Alvar was also blessed by his location. His headquarters was always near the Lipa Mountains or Mount Bananghao or, or Mount uh, Makiling. So the terrain helped him to sustain his resistance longer. You know that you cannot confront them directly. They have massive firepower. But you should be able to trick them into making mistakes and, and also kind of prevent them from finding out where you are.
Pananalig, mga kababayan. At pagkakait sa sarili at pagkakaisa. Huwag nating pahintulutan na mga sakripisyong inialay at mga buhay ng mga ama, anak, mga kapatid, at pati na rin ang mga asawa na naibuwis ay mapawalang halaga. Tama! Tama! Huwag nating dungisan ng alaala ng mga nauna sa atin sa altar ng pagsasakripisyo para sa bansa. Huwag nating pahintulutan na sumpain tayo ng mga darating na henerasyon. Dahilan lang sa kaawa-awa at kahiyahiyang tanawin ng bayang nagpalipin! Mabuhay! 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 It was a very hard life. It's a very hard life that he had to ask from his wife and from his children and from all the other people there who equally all had family that were being hamleted and being abused. But they fell one by one because, you know, uh, the American forces led by General Schwann, you know, were, were like an armored brigade. They, all the best horses, you know, they, they, they really made a blitzkrieg in, into southern Tagalog. And, and Malvar, you know, Malvar had to, had to move his, his line back. But he always kept the, uh, the pressure on the Americans. And then when it was clear the Americans uh, were going to push through anyway, he let them in. And then he, then, then he practiced guerrilla warfare against the Americans who were, capture, who were setting up the garrisons in the poblacion. For a long time, it was a symbol of resistance and defiance. Eh? Symbolic siya, at the same time, hold out, and strategically, and because of his position, commander-in-chief, he had to be caught, he had to be pacified before the Americans could say, okay, pacify the Pilipinas. When was the last time you saw Malvar? They used uh, torture if necessary to get information. They finally figured out where Malvar was. Malvar is very clear about this. I surrendered because I, I knew that in 1903, my people would be dying of hunger. Uh, agriculture had already been at a standstill for several years because of the guerrilla war and the, and the American policy of burning. And then there was, <laughs> to top it all, there was a cholera epidemic uh, that hit that region. It started from Manila and it arrived in April. Now, if you see the timing, why did it surrender in April?
you know, defiance is a good virtue. Defiance. Okay. Sometimes when you do certain things, pag lumalaban ka, or not just when you fight, when you do certain things, may end game. Eh. Sometimes it, it could be about principle. Or sometimes it could be the final end game. Ano ba ang pinaglalaban ko? If you're looking at pinaglalaban ko yung mga dayuhan, ayaw akong nasa bayang ko to. Sa mga ila, paglalaban ko to. So ang end game mo, paalis yung kayong mga dayuhan. But in reality, hindi mo mapapalis. Yun ang reality. Because you're not equipped enough, they're strong. They're too strong. Wala. So then it becomes prinsipyo na lang. Ngayon, ang prinsipyo mo, kung mag-isa ka lang, okay lang. Ikaw lang manahirapan eh. I can die for my beliefs. I can suffer for my beliefs. But if other people are going to die for my beliefs, if other people are going to suffer for my beliefs, unless they share my beliefs, then it's irrational for them. Diba? From the time that the war started, from the revolution with the, with the Spaniards, until the end of the American War, that was a long time. You were fighting two wars. You were engaging with two enemies. All the focus was on Malvar, representing the entire Philippines and the province. And he was a holdout. Bago siya mamatay, nung nasa kama na siya, tinawag niya lahat ng kanyang anak. Anak kanyang habilin, imahalin ninyo ang inyong ina. At saka, napaka-importante ng edukasyon. Music